So let's illustrate the idea of Lagrange Lagrangian uh, with the following example. Okay, suppose I want to maximize x1 plus x2, so I want to move in this direction, subject to that all the points must be within this cycle, circle, and uh, x2 cannot be greater than 6. Of course, graphically we can see x2 is redundant, sure? Oh, but in general, if we have too many constraints, this redundancy is not obvious. So, uh, anyway, graphically we can see the optimal solution is here. Oh, x star is 2, 2, and the z star is 4. Let's try to do algebra on this problem, okay? Let's try to find the Lagrangian and the, the Lagrangian relaxation. The original nonlinear program is here. Okay, on oh, z star, da, 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 da. there is the objective function, two constraints. Because there are two constraints, the Lagrangian, by definition, need two Lagrangian multipliers or Lagrange multipliers. The first constraint is uh, the first multiplier is associated with the first constraint and the second for the second. So the Lagrangian by definition, is first the objective function, and then is the difference between the right hand side and the left hand side of the con of the first constraint multiplied by lambda one, and then is the right hand side of the second constraint and the first left hand side multiplied with the second Lagrange multipliers. Always keep in mind that for constraints you are using the larger one to subtract the lower one, or the smaller one, okay? Because you want to leave this part non-negative. And then lambda is also non-negative, so that you are rewarding feasible points, okay? Uh, probably you can say, okay, if this is a minimization problem, then either you use the smaller part to minus the larger part, or you set lambda to be negative, but everything has a central uh, idea. We want to reward, we need to reward feasible points, and uh, that's going to help us later. So we have the Lagrangian like this, so the Lagrangian relaxation will be this one. So we are still solving a maximization problem, but now there is no constraint. All the constraints have been put to the fixed objective function. We define the optimized objective value given lambda, okay, as this, ZL of lambda. Different lambda definitely gives you different values. Let's see some examples. Suppose I say, okay, let's randomly pick 0 and 1 as lambda 1 and lambda 2. Then, when I set lambda 1 as 0 and lambda 2 as 1, I can see the problem becomes this, okay? And uh, to maximize it, we get infinity. There is no solution that is optimal. But if we choose the lambdas to be 1 and 2, okay? Lambda to be 1 and 2, we plug in 1 and the 2 here, da -da 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 -da, I have to do something. This goes back to a nonlinear program, and it can be optimized. In general, this problem may not be having a unique optimal solution, but as long as it is an unconstrained nonlinear program, you can solve it, right? Oh, so that's not a big deal. Let's assume we have solved it. In this case, we just need to do first order condition because this, we are maximizing a concave function. Plug it, if we plug in uh, optimal solution, we get 20.5. Or if the multipliers are 1 and 0, blah, 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 we will get 8 and 5. You may want to verify them by yourself. One thing we found is different lambda gives us different objective value. And we also find that all these values are greater than z star, which is 4. Okay? Naturally, we want to ask whether this is true. Uh, before we tell you the answer, let's think about the following question. I give you a nonlinear, I, I give you a, un, I give you a constraint problem. If I simply relax all the constraint, will I do better or worse? Of course, I will do better. 
and for maximization problem, better means larger objective values, right? So if I simply relax all the constraints, Z star will go up, and the, the relaxed Z star will be greater than the original Z star. But here, I am not just relaxing all the constraints, I add them somehow to the objective function, right? Oh, so will this still be always giving us an upper bound? Let's see it. The answer is yes. Lagrangian relaxation always provides a bound for the original nonlinear program. In particular, for the two nonlinear programs defined in equation 1 and equation 2, this, the, the relaxation always gives an upper bound. For maximization problem, we give an upper bound. For minimization problems, we give a lower bound. Of course, lambda must be chosen carefully for their sign. And whether you are using the right-hand side to minus the left-hand side or to use the left-hand side to minus the right-hand side must be also uh, designed carefully. But as long as you know we are rewarding feasible points, then that's enough. Technically, Z star is the optimized objective value for the constraint problem. This thing definitely will be smaller than or equal to this guy. Oh, constraints are the same, but we are adding some negative things into the feasible region. Okay, uh, sorry, into the objective function. So of course, this is making things larger. And then if we relax all the constraints, we can still make things larger. And then this is our Lagrangian objective value. Okay, again, oh, this proof shows that the sign of lambda is important, and uh, which one subtracts the other one is important. Huh? The order here is also important. If you messed up here, you are not going to have an inequality like this. Okay. So, given a constrained original nonlinear program, solving its Lagrangian relaxation will give us some information or a bound. This is actually uh, familiar to you, right? For LP, we have faced the, uh, exactly the same situation. Given a primal solution, a primal LP, any feasible dual solution gives an upper bound uh, or lower bound. And what we did for LP duality is to look for a dual optimal solution. The dual optimal solution will give us a tight bound. And that means uh, Z star equals W star, or their two objective values are identical. And moreover, a dual optimal solution actually solves the primal LP, right? So this suggests a strategy. Given a constrained nonlinear program, maybe we can also formulate the Lagrange relaxation, okay? And the lambda, make lambda as variables and uh, try to solve that problem. Maybe that can also provide useful information to us. So this is the idea. Given that we have an upper bound for all the lambda, naturally we want to find the parameters so that the bound is tightest or the smallest. And the new optimization problem will be the Lagrangian dual program. Huh? defined as Lagrangian dual. So the whole thing here are called Lagrangian duality. It's similar to linear program duality, okay? Uh, some similar stuff. Therefore, we can say that, oh, so now we know the thing. Lagrange multipliers, they are actually dual variables. They are not just some randomly showed up uh, mathematical terms. They are dual variables, and you know dual variables have their physical meanings. Sometimes um, they they tell you whether a constraint is binding or not. Uh, they may provide information about uh, shadow prices and so on and so on. Actually, they all uh, these can all be replicated to nonlinear programs. So Lagrange multipliers. Okay, huh? keep in mind they are just dual variables. Moreover, we can actually show you that LP duality is a special case of Lagrangian duality. 
if we apply the idea of Lagrangian relaxation to a linear program, well, that means we relax those linear constraints and add them to the objective function, and so on and so on. After some derivation, we always give you exactly the dual linear program. Okay, and these are some very nice mathematical properties, but um, let's uh, forget it for a while. Lagrangian duality in general is very nice because it has a lot of um, interesting properties. But here in this course, um, we are still in the course of operations research. What we really worry about is how to solve the primal, uh, how to solve the constrained original nonlinear program. Okay, so here, just keep in mind, lambda i is the dual variable for constraint i. Lambda i has its sign. The sign must be chosen so that we are rewarding the feasible points. Okay, and then in the next video, we're going to tell you how the Lagrangian help us in solving nonlinear programs. Okay. Let's do that in the next video. Thank you.